This is going to be a tutorial for creating a full screen shader effect in Godot. There are multiple steps to this process. First of all, I'm going to show you how to set up your camera with a canvas layer on it, creating a simple grayscaling shader, and then how you can access a bunch of built-in examples that are available from the project manager. Then afterwards, I'm going to show you how to use shader parameters with the shaders we've created and creating a simple chromatic aberration effect. So here I've got an empty project and I'm going to create a new 2D scene and I'm going to attach a camera 2D to that. This camera 2D, we're going to want to set it to be our current camera so that when we start the game, it will use that camera. And we're going to attach a canvas layer as a child. A canvas layer will draw over your whole screen. So this means if we add a color rect as a child of that, make it fill its container, that will draw over the entirety of our camera whenever we're looking at anything. So if we put a shader on this, it will affect everything on our screen, no matter what we're looking at. We're then going to go down to our material, we're going to add a shader to that, and then we can start writing our shader. We're going to want to define a shader type. In 2D, this will be a canvas item. And then we're going to define our fragment function. Our fragment function describes what we will do to every pixel on our screen color-wise. We're going to want to get what the screen is looking at and save that as a texture for us to modify. We can do this by passing in screen texture and screen UV as parameters to our texture function. This will save whatever is behind our canvas layer, i.e. our screen. We can then take the mean of the red, green and blue channels and save that as a variable we will call average. This will take the average colour of our screen and if we assign all our red, green, and blue channels to be the same number, we will have a very simple grayscale effect. And there, in four lines of code, roughly, you get a grayscale effect you can apply to any game and just chuck it in on top, and it'll all work nice and dandy. Now, we can add a few sprites into our scene. I'm just going to drag the Godot icon straight from the editor, and you can see already, just putting them over that area will make them be grayscaled. There's going to be a slight difference between the editor and how things look in-game at the moment because this canvas layer gets drawn over the camera, although it gets that gets decided at runtime. So here, it will only draw the effect over where the canvas layer is, but you've got to remember that updates to where the camera is pointing. So I'm going to move all those icons to where the camera will actually be pointing. One of the nice things about working with shaders in Godot is that they update in real time in the editor, so you can see exactly how your work is appearing as you update. I'm then going to save the scene, and I'm going to run it. And there we are, we have a screen that will draw everything in grayscale. That's great. We can then go to step two, which is if we dive back into the project manager and we go to this templates tab, we can look up a variety of pre-existing resources. These are incredibly helpful and it's well worth having a look at them. We're going to look up shaders and find the 2D screen space shaders demo. These have a variety of shaders that have already been made for you to use that you can put on that canvas layer we created earlier. This is also a good way of seeing how good shaders are written. So we're going to want to download the demo and we're going to want to install it, create a folder to install it to, and then the project will boot up. So here you can see all the effects that are supplied as part of this demo. You can see there's a vignette, a blur, a pixelize effect, and etc, etc. I'm going to pull the pixelize effect out of this demo and bring it into our project. If you click on any of these images, you can go down to their material and click on the shader to view it. It's well worth having a mess around with the parameters and trying to wrap your head around how these work. It's a very good resource for learning. So, we can get a hold of these shaders by opening the shader folder, and then we can jump into our file manager. This will be based on whatever system you're using. I am in Linux, so we've got Nemo showing off our files here. And we're going to grab the pixelate shader. We're then going to want to open the directory where our project is. I forgot where it was, so I'm going to use a bit of Linux magic to find that file for me. And then we're going to go ahead and drag our new shader over into our project. Now we have the shader in our project, we can close this demo and return to where we were originally. Let's save our black and white shader in case we want to use that later on, and let's just go and drag our new shader into that shader field on the right. And you can see already we have the pixelate effect applying to our camera.
If we run that straight away, we can see it in all its glory. So, as we pointed out earlier, there are a few parameters on that shader. I'm going to show you how to affect those parameters now. I'm going to add a V slider to the left side of our screen and then use the layout toggle to make it fill the left side. We're going to use this to directly interact with the parameters of our shader. So, we're going to want to attach a script to our camera 2D and we're going to want to connect a signal from this V slider to that script the on value changed signal. This has a parameter, which is what value you've set the V slider to, and we're going to directly map that on to the shader parameter on our shader. We can get to that shader parameter by going to the item the material is on, so in this case our color rect, and we can get material on that item, and then we can use dot set shader param, and we can pass in the name of our parameter there, and directly assign that to the value of our V slider. Now, it's quite important that our vSlider sets it to sensible values, so let's dive into the finder for that. We're going to set its minimum to a suitable minimum and the maximum to a suitable maximum. When we're dealing with pixel sizes, we're dealing with very small numbers, so multiple noughts, and we're going to change the step. That's how much the slider increases or decreases as we move it up and down, and we're going to set the current value to be a reasonable starting point. When we run the project, it's as simple as that, we can just drag the slider on the left and the size of the pixelation effect will change dynamically. There are a whole host of different ways you could interact with that set shader param function. For example, you could do it in an animation player if you wanted. You could make it so that when you get hit, you use a tween to increase and decrease the value to make the whole screen pixelate and depixelate dynamically to give a bit of extra juice there. Regardless, that's how you control shader parameters from in code. I highly recommend you try this approach with a variety of the other shaders available in the demo shown earlier. The old timey effect is of interest because you're also going to want to grab the various art assets it uses, for example the film grain and the vignetting effect. And then you're going to want to drag those in as parameters for your shader as well. The final part of today's tutorial is going to be showing you how to create a simple chromatic aberration effect. What this does is it splits our red channel and blue channel off and shows them to the left and right of our image respectively. It's going to make things look distorted and it's quite hard to look at but if used in moderation can be very attractive especially for showing distortion or hacky sort of glitch effects. So what we're going to want to do is create another new shader and have a fragment function. We're going to create vector 4s for the green channel, red channel and blue channels respectively. And for the green channel, we're going to set that to be the actual green channel, so we're going to grab our screen check texture and screen UV. And for our red channel, we're going to want to offset where on the screen we're reading the red colour from. So we're going to add an offset, which is going to be a multiple of our screen pixel size, to the UV, to the X coordinate of our UV. What this will do is it will just move a certain number of pixels over to the right or left respectively, depending on whether you add or subtract the value. And as you will see in a moment, it will let us show our red and our blue on either side of the image. So we're then going to do the opposite for the blue channel, and we're going to assign our colour to be a combination of the red channel's red value, the green channel's green value, and the blue channel's blue value. We're then going to set our alpha channel to be 1 so that it's a solid colour, and there we have it. Or I should say there we don't. We need to also pass in our uv.y. At the moment it's freaking out as a result of me not having constructed my vector 2 properly. Also, we're going to want to update the values our vslider passes in. At the moment that's set up for very small numbers for the pixelation, whereas we're actually incrementing a number of pixels so we can use a rather large number. We can go say between 1 and 100 and it will move it either 1 pixel to the right or 100 respectively. So let's toggle our value, our min, our max and our step, and then let's give it a whirl. And there we have it, our blue goes to the right and our red goes to the left. As I said, very good in moderation. You can see when it's quite close it looks quite blurry. Regardless, it's a very useful tool. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more Godot tutorials and game dev content in general.